Hello everyone, welcome to my Last of Us Part 2, Grounded Difficulty, no damage, no crafting, no upgrades, no safes, walkthrough, and this is Seattle Day 2 for Ellie's section, and this was pretty annoying to do, because most of the encounters of Seattle Day 2 I just could not do on the first try, the strategies that I laid out in my Survivor Difficulty walkthrough just weren't working, so I had to rethink everything again, given the increased awareness on the enemies, and with certain problems I was experiencing doing some of the sections. I mean, this strategy right here is exactly the same as in my Survivor Difficulty walkthrough, only the point at which I actually go for the door is different. In my Survivor Difficulty walkthrough, this woman and her dog, I waited for them to get very far away from me before I actually opened the door, but it turns out that's not really the best method because there are still other enemies looking at you, it's just I got very lucky on that particular recording. So instead what I'm going to do is when I go for the door, I'm going to wait for them to move a couple of feet away before hitting it. That way uh, the rest of the enemies won't be able to spot me because it takes such a long time to get through this door. And it's just so odd because every other door that allows you to exit the encounter, they aren't as long as this one. I'm not sure why this one is such a unique exception. But this woman and her dog, they're very buggy. I had one instance where they somehow spotted me for no reason, even though I was in this spot right now. There is no way I was in their line of sight. And in general, these two just behave very weirdly because the dog at times doesn't go with the owner. The dog will instead just circle around the, the brick wall and the leash will just clip through the geometry. And it will just wait until the dog actually goes back with the owner. And during that time, uh, weird stuff happens where they just spot you for no reason. And it's the same case with uh, the first woman you come across when you're doing this encounter. Uh, for some reason, I had a moment where uh, the woman who was inside of the bank area, she saw me for some reason, but she didn't immediately start her investigative state. Uh, both of those moments I do show in the blooper section, so you need to see the kind of troubles I had when it came to doing that section. But this part right here, I just used the, the broken window to get these guys away, and I probably should have uh, used the dive to prone trick to move faster because this runner spots me. But he doesn't chase me when I get out this door for some reason. So now I'm just going to pick up the arrow right over here, and there's going to be a couple of infected in the way. But I'm just going to use the dive to prone method in order to move a little bit faster, and then I'm going to start sprinting when they start seeing me because they're very easy to get past. And, uh,. I actually learned something, if you pick up the uh, shotgun holster back in Barco's pet shop, the long gun holster's location is not here, it's actually uh, later on in Seattle Day 2. I don't know why this occurs, it's very odd, but gotta bear that in mind if you decide to pick up the pistol holster very early on in Barco's pet shop. But now we're about to deal with the stalker, and I try to showcase my method for dealing with the stalker, but I failed to realize that I have a pipe on hand right now. So I end up hitting this guy, and then I'm going to have to melee him some more, and then he pushes me away. Uh, normally what you're supposed to do is you dodge the first attack and then dive backwards, and then you hit him once, go to their side, and then uh, hit them twice. Um, normally it's twice, uh, you just gotta hit them until uh, they start to face you directly, and then uh, once you hit them once, after they face you directly, you gotta dodge again, and just uh, repeat the process, that's normally how I do it. I mean, it doesn't work every time. I mean, for the most part, I don't try to engage in combat with the stalkers. I normally just use my weapons because uh, it's just a time-consuming process trying to go into melee combat with them. But this encounter right here, this was another one that I wasn't able to do on the first attempt. And uh, the, the dive-to-prone method really helps in moving fast during these moments. Although, I had a really stupid moment happen where somebody saw me in the grass at a distance he shouldn't be able to see me from, and I included it in the blooper section. But you're supposed to hide under here and wait for these two to have a conversation. The dog at the beginning of the encounter will sniff me out, but he's not going to have enough time to get to me. So, I'll have plenty of time to do this part right here. But I'm not going to use the dive to prone method because I'm very close to this person, and... I don't know if she does turning animations, but every single time I've done this, she's never done a turning animation. And there's also the possibility of those enemies on the right potentially spotting me when I do the dive to prone method. But once you get past the stairs over here, you need to go all the way to the left, and I mean all the way, because somehow, the owner and the dog behind me managed to spot me while I was inside of the grass, because I wasn't all the way back here. And you see them right there? Those were the guys that spotted me. 
And all I'm going to do right here is wait for this woman to come back down the stairs and go all the way to the right. And then that will be my cue to move. I'm going to utilize the dive to prone method a little bit when the enemies in front of me aren't looking at me. It's a little risky. It probably would have been safer if I had just not done it. But that right there. You see that just then? I did not go to the right just then. That was the game's fault. I pushed forward on the left analog stick. And for some reason, it causes my character to sometimes go to the left or right. It's a really weird problem. You have to make sure you're in a very open area before deciding to use the dive to pro method because weird stuff like that happens. I mean, that's what I'm assuming is causing that particular issue. But once you're down here, start running. Uh, as you see right there, somebody goes into investigative status, but they're very slow to do so. And they don't even do any quotes for some reason. And then when you're over here, you're going to need to uh, go prone right here. There's going to be a guy and his dog right over there. Uh, for some reason, they can still kind of see you. I, I think the dog has a greater sense of awareness compared to the humans. Um, but right there, they still kind of saw me. I don't recommend going through that window at that exact point. Wait a little bit longer before moving on. And just do the strike animation on this guy. Make sure you have a stun bomb for the sequence so that you can stun the upcoming enemies. Because this is really the only part of the game where I need a, a stun bomb. And uh, hide over here. Aim for that part of the wall. Wait a little bit and then throw the stun bomb. Don't bother killing the enemies, run past them. And then, you don't even have to run past this enemy right here. There's actually a, a squeeze face right there that will allow you to get past them. And all you gotta do now is just run for your life. And then we now have the encounter with Jesse. And this is gonna be a unique encounter because you can actually no damage this encounter, but doing so is very difficult. So what I do is I turn on the accessibility option for slow motion while aiming. And it really helps out. And I also discovered that you can use the trip mine to kill off a bunch of enemies so that you're not having to deal with more enemies than what's necessary when you first start the car sequence. Because trying to aim for these enemies can be very difficult when they're just moving all over the place and they're taking cover in some very annoying spots. And also, when you kill that enemy, these other enemies right here, they're very sporadic in what they do. There's no telling what they're going to do at all, because sometimes they'll go this way, other times they'll circle around on the other side of the fence to my right. It's just not very consistent, so you have to make sure you're not being spotted by these enemies. I mean, even if you do get spotted, just try to kill them very quickly. I mean, the other enemies that spawn in the upcoming encounter will not appear until you actually get rid of these enemies. But once Jesse kills that enemy, I'm going to use the trap mine, and I'm going to place it right over here. You'll notice the game's moving in slow motion right now while I'm aiming. This is the key to doing this section. Now, also make sure that your uh, your pistol is reloaded so that you're not getting caught in the reload animation upon starting this encounter. Okay. But right now, the enemies are behind me. They're seeing me right now. One of them is going to trigger the trap mine, and that will be really good. So right there, I killed off a couple of enemies, but now I'm just going to aim directly for the head, and it's only those two enemies you really need to worry about. Now this one, you can just stab, and you don't even have to shoot the next two enemies. They will not be able to hit you. So I'm just going to wait for uh, Jesse to do his thing. He's going to back up into that guy over there. And then the guys in the jeep are going to come. I don't know if you're able to kill these guys in the jeep at this point right here. But I try to do so. And I end up having to reload. So they're going to be in front of you now. Uh, use the slow motion while aiming to stun these guys. Try to go for headshots as best as you can. I try to do so, but it fails. And then I don't know how I missed my shot just then. And I was very lucky that that guy on the left didn't hit me. You have got to get rid of these enemies very quickly before they damage you. I mean, it doesn't matter if you take damage on this sequence, because the damage that you take is completely lost when you resume control of Ellie again. But the enemies on this section damage you greatly on ground of difficulty, so I figured it was best just to utilize a no damage strategy, just so you're not having too much difficulty with this section. Because doing this without using the slow motion while aiming is very difficult to do, because the camera moves around so much, given that the Jeep is having to go over a bunch of like rough terrain. But once you kill the driver, you will not have to worry about any other uh, moments where you need to use the slow motion while aiming. So I'm just going to disable it. That will be the only time I utilize that. Skipping on ahead, I'm just going to kill this clicker right here. And then I'm going to transition over to the past. There's uh, some opportunity to pick up some ammo and some bottles over here. And then this encounter right here, I could not get on the first try because uh, I messed up. The clicker that's on this section, I kept having issues taking it out. Because on ground difficulty, your stealth kills make a lot more noise, and there is a runner on the opposite end of a wall that kept hearing me when I was trying to kill the clicker. And of course, you can't move clickers around when you initiate the stealth animation. So you have to commit to the position you're killing the clicker at. 
in order to ensure that you're able to get rid of it. And I also learned something else. You know the trick I recommended where you aim and move, and you move at your slowest possible speed so clickers can't even hear you? Well, it doesn't work on ground and difficulty. Clickers can still hear you while you're aiming and moving. So the game is forcing you to commit to going into a prone position, standing still, and then uh, going back into a crouch position so you can initiate the stealth kill animation. And that is what I'm, I'm going to have to do right here. So I'm making sure I'm prone behind this cover here. I'm trying to make sure I'm not extended too far out because if my profile is extended too far out, the clicker will spot me while it's doing its echolocation. But I'm able to kill the clicker here, and the runner is not close to me. So the runner did not hear me when I was going for the stealth attack just then. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait in this spot right here, and I'm going to wait for the runner to come near me because if I go for the runner too early, the other runner will spot me while I'm doing the stealth kill. So, right around here is the best time to go for the stealth kill on this runner. And then I'm going to take out the other runner that's moving around. And then, the other two runners that are just standing still... You have to get it where Joel actually goes for the stealth kill on one of the runners. And then, you yourself can go for the other stealth kill. Because, of course, your stealth kills make a lot of noise. And that got me screwed several times while I was doing this, and I'm like, what's going on? And I originally assumed that what was happening was I was going for the stealth kill too quickly and not letting Joel set up in this position, so that would cause a scripting error where the runner would just be alerted to my presence. And it was a very similar case that happened in Pittsburgh in the first Last of Us, and you're in the nighttime encounter with Henry. If you go for one of the two guys very quickly before Henry actually sets up, the other guy will spot you while you're doing the stealth kill. And... I just think it's really dumb that you have to wait on Henry. I mean, I, I personally wish that he would just teleport over to the second guy. And I mean, in Uncharted 4, they did kind of correct for this issue, because there was an encounter in Chapter 8 where there are two guys having a conversation. Nate is telling Sam to go for the guy on the left while he goes for the one on the right. When you kill the guy on the right, regardless of whether Sam is so far away from you, he teleports over to the other guy. The other guy never gets a chance to spot you very quickly, and I was hoping it would be the same case with this game, but they didn't include that for this particular section, and I don't understand why. But it turns out, that's not what was causing the issue. The issue was, I was just making a lot of noise with my stealth kill on ground difficulty, and that was why the other runner was spotting me, which was a very surprising discovery for this difficulty. But we now move on to the boulder fight, and the boulder fight is still exactly the same as in Survivor difficulty, where you just gotta deal a certain amount of damage to this guy, let him grab you, and then Joel will just finish him off. I mean, the game doesn't really make it clear how much you need to uh, pump into this guy in order to ensure that you're not going to get instantly killed by the grab. I wish the game would be a little bit clearer about that, but I think what it all comes down to is shooting each of this guy's individual body parts so that his flesh would be exposed. Uh, but I still think you need to deal enough damage to him. I mean, if this game actually had some kind of health bar system for the enemies, like as an accessibility option, I think that would have been really nice. But they didn't bother including it as an accessibility option in this game, unfortunately. But I think that's only because this game is a survival horror game, and part of the ambiguity of survival horror games is not knowing how much health a boss has. But I just think in certain situations, it's best to have a health bar, because there are a lot of moments when it comes to these kind of bosses where you're really not sure uh, how much health these guys have, and it just feels like your shots aren't registering at times, and... You know, like, feedback is always an essential when it comes to really understanding if you're damaging an enemy, and... That's why I just can't approve of the lack of any kind of hit marker system in this uh, difficulty. And I just really don't understand what Naughty Dog was thinking when they decided to get rid of the hit marker based system in this game. But uh, the boulder has grabbed me, but Joel is going to be able to kill it. And now we're just going to move on back to the present day sections with Ellie. And they're all relatively simple aside from the hospital infiltration area because that section is just so heavy on the RNG. And the AI just does all sorts of weird things. But aside from that, the rest of these encounters aren't so bad. And here's an encounter with the Stalkers. Uh, you don't have to kill this first guy. He just disappears after a certain amount of time. I thought I could do a strike animation on him, but it just didn't work. And then we have this other encounter with the Stalkers that I'm just going to run past because Stalkers are so passive in these kind of encounters. I normally go on the right-hand side of this area and remain crouched, and then I start sprinting. But I just decided to go down this path because I thought there would be a shotgun shell around here. But I misremembered where the shotgun shell was, and it's in the uh, the next half of this encounter, after you get out of this building. And uh, I make a mistake right here. I thought there was a window I had to break, but there wasn't. It's this window you have to break. And uh, that is the end of that first half of the encounter. 
now we move on to the second half of the encounter, and the second half of the encounter has a bunch of stalkers, and there's only one clicker. Um, on my Survivor difficulty walkthrough, I used a lot of melee against the stalkers, but it was just a waste of time. Just use your guns here. Um, I probably should have used my revolver, but I instead opt to use my uh, sniper rifle, because the sniper rifle on this game just doesn't have a lot of utilities, and given how much damage it does, which is just very little, given that ground difficulty doesn't scale the weapons realistically whatsoever, you know, it's, it's just a throwaway weapon. It's the same case with, uh, like, the revolver or the pistol. Only the revolver and the pistol don't feel like throwaway weapons compared to the sniper rifle, because I can at least use the revolver or the pistol if I grab a human shield, and then while I'm holding the human shield, I can aim my weapon and then just take out any enemies that are looking at me, and that'll ensure I get rid of multiple enemies, but with the sniper rifle, I can't do anything like that, and with how much damage it does, it's just not very useful against higher tiered enemies, like bloaters for instance. Like, the shotgun more than survives for that, because the shotgun does a lot more damage than the sniper rifle. The shotgun is really the only weapon that I feel like is still very reliable on ground difficulty. I mean, the bow and arrow is still kind of the same, but I still wish the bow and arrow would actually instantly kill enemies, regardless of what body part you shot, given that it's a stealth weapon. And when you have to specifically go for headshots with a stealth weapon that is as powerful as the bow and arrow, it just makes the stealth feel very clunky in certain areas. And a quick and efficient process would make the stealth feel less clunky, and that's exactly what the bow and arrow felt like in the first Last of Us on ground difficulty, but that just wasn't the case in this game. And also, I thought the sniper rifle would actually instantly kill the stalkers, given that they're just kind of uh, a cross between a runner and a clicker, and runners actually die instantly from the sniper rifle, but it turns out these guys are a little bit more durable, so I'm gonna have to resort to leg shots, and the sniper rifle can take off the leg of a stalker, and then I can just finish it off using a ground stomp. And I believe there's about like six or seven stalkers in this encounter. So I am going to use up quite a lot of ammo, but again, the sniper rifle really doesn't have a lot of utilities for LE section. And see how day three, you can get most of the encounters done stealthily, and then the encounter with the bloater, I'm just going to use the shotgun and some pistol bullets in order to deal with the bloater and the runners. I don't know why they just had to make the sniper rifle so useless on this game. But that is the end of this encounter right here, and after we do some quick time events, I'm just going to transition over to the encounter with the Seraphites. And the encounter with the Seraphites, I do change up my strategy slightly, but it's still relatively the same as what I used in my survivor difficulty walkthrough. So, upon first starting this encounter, you always want to go near the middle area and go on this side. That way you can always cause the Seraphites to spawn from the exact same areas, and this will help ensure that the strategy goes very well. I mean, there is still a bit of RNG involved with certain enemies, but as long as you know where to actually remain prone in the grass, they're not going to be a problem whatsoever. So, I'm going to go all the way to the left-hand side of this area, and then as I'm mantling, I'm going to hold circle so that Ellie will quickly go into the prone position. Uh, these guys will just go and investigate the other half of the area behind me, and... Now I'm just going to go along this side right here, and I normally went on the left-hand side, but this woman over here can oftentimes uh, go a greater distance on the left-hand side, and it's just best to go this way. And when she decides to go back this way, I am going to follow her. There are times when she doesn't appear here. That guy on the right can sometimes be over here, and you'll have to wait a little bit longer, or you're just going to have to wait for her to come back and just follow her from here. And you can also use the dive to prone method to move a little bit faster, but I don't recommend it in this encounter because there's always a possibility of one of these Seraphites spotting you as you're getting up off the ground. And I'm going uh, in the crouch position right here just so I can move a little bit faster. Uh, there's normally a Seraphite on that side right there, and then there's always the possibility of this woman looking back over here. So you need to triple check and make sure that none of the Seraphites are looking at you. And somebody starts to look at me, and I don't really understand how they can see me from here. I mean, maybe that woman was somehow seeing me through the fence, but it doesn't matter. Once I get over here, the encounter is practically done, and just make sure you pick up that arrow, because you need at least two arrows for Seattle Day 3 if you're wanting to do a strategy against uh, a really tough encounter with the WLF. Uh, there is the long gun holster, and now we're on this encounter right here. Um, this section originally, I think it was bugged, because... On my survivor difficulty walkthrough, I used the checkpoint to my advantage to despawn certain enemies, and... I think they patched that now, so the enemies will remain in the area even after you restart the checkpoint. And I'm talking about the last couple of enemies. But this pattern right here, 
Uh, you can sprint along the left-hand side at a particular point, and then that guy with the torch is random where he's going to go, but most of the time he goes in that direction. So I'm just going to hide behind the tree, and I'm just going to wait for him to pass, and then once he's far enough away, I'm going to sprint all the way over here, and I'm going to hide in the grass over here. You need to remain prone because this woman over here can spot you while you're crouched. You have to go inside of this building at this exact point in her path. If she is walking along the ledge that she is near, she will most likely spot you as you are making your way up this incline that this enemy is using right now. And this enemy right here, you need to make sure that she does two turning animations. Because if you don't wait for her, she will spot you if you try to get behind her. And I don't know why she has to do all these turning animations. There's no logic to when the enemies do the turning animations. They're having to re-examine like, areas that they've already seen so many times. It's just so dumb, the lack of logic involved with these turning animations. And it just makes the stealth very tedious in certain areas, and just very broken. But this one right here, use the dive to probe method to move very quickly because if you are standing and jogging on this incline right here, there is a chance that an enemy above you will hear you. So I'm just going to go over to this grass right here and all I'm waiting for is for a guy with an axe to be right on top of me. And the moment I spot him, I'm going to look to my right and I'm going to check the pathing on the woman to my right in order to ensure that she's not going to spot me as I'm making my way through this area. And she has a tendency of doing a lot of turning animations, so do not underestimate her. And I normally go when she does the turning animation that allows her to look behind her, but I think there is a rare possibility that she will repeat the exact same turning animation, which is very bullcrap, but I don't think that possibility is very high, so I think you're free to move if she does that turning animation, of course. But... Her pathing is very random. Sometimes she'll be right over there. Other times, she'll be off to the right. It's something you're going to have to wait on. And I don't blame you if you have to wait a little bit longer for the guy with the axe to come back so that uh, he's not going to spot you as you're making your way uh, through this area. So if that is the case, go for it. But hopefully it doesn't happen to you. And uh, she should be doing the... Yeah, she's doing the turning animation right now. And I'm just going to wait for her to stand still. And she's doing it right now, and there is a patch of grass to my left right here. And I normally just go into the sprint animation when she's far enough away. But given that she's going to be moving in a direction that will allow her to spot me, I found it best just to go prone. And she kind of spots me just then, but it doesn't matter. Because when you get over to this side of the area, the Seraphites just have a lot of trouble getting to you when you initiate this combat encounter. And this combat encounter is so dumb. It's so dumb that it forces you into it and that there are two enemies alongside the melee guy that just really affect the pacing of this encounter. And you're forced to be very technical with your approach on this encounter. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to stand near the doorway so that the two enemies that are inside that room will not try to rush me because, of course, they're expecting the guy with the melee weapon to try to rush me. And I'm going to dodge him. I'm going to pull out my revolver and then go for his head. This will open them up to being instantly killed by the strike animation. Now what's going to happen is these two enemies are going to try to rush you, given that you've taken out the person that was uh, putting pressure on you. And you need to have your bottle out and melee the first guy that comes through the door so that you can stun him and grab him as a human shield in order to prevent the other guy from shooting you. And then you need to aim for that guy's leg, and then take out the guy with the strike animation, and then do the same with the next guy. And that is the end of that really weird encounter. And now we have my least favorite encounter in Seattle Day 2 for Ellie's section. I really feel like Ellie goes through a lot of these really dumb encounters. You know, Abby doesn't have a lot of bad encounters like this one, but Ellie just has a lot more of that. And right now what you're going to have to do is you need to go prone here, but don't move too far ahead. There's a guy behind you. You need to wait until the female soldier says, I heard we might take the fight to them. And then I'm going to use the dive to prone method in order to get into this grass very quickly. But you got to do it from that position because the owner and her dog will spot you if you mistime it. And I'm going to try to hug the left hand side so that this owner and her dog will not detect my sentrail too quickly. And I'm also going to go all the way to the left right here in order to trigger a conversation so I can keep track over one male soldier because this one male soldier can sometimes spot you when you're uh, mantling through this window so you need to hug the left hand side right here and hide behind this column check where he is he's in a good spot so I'm going to hold L1 and circle at the same time while I'm crouched in order to dive to prone and not initiate the sprint animation and this will allow me to move very fast now what's going to happen is there are going to be three enemies right here I'm going to take them out their pathing is completely random 
Uh, this guy right here, he's always going to patrol this hallway, and then there's also going to be a female soldier patrolling this area right here. She has a tendency of doing that turning animation, and she can spot you behind those uh, wooden boxes right in, in front of you. So you, you need to hide in that spot right there, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take her out. There is a chance that there will be an enemy to your left, so I highly recommend that you check the left side of her before going for the stealth kill. Now what you're going to have to do is you need to wait in this area right here and wait for that soldier over there to start moving to the left. And I'm going to take her out. You need to make sure you pull her away from the doorway that she's near because there is a chance that the male soldier will spot you while you're doing the stealth kill animation. And she does the turning animation, which doesn't make any sense. What is she trying to look at? You know, again, it, there's no logic to the turning animations whatsoever. It's just bullcrap. And the fact that the turning animations couldn't cause the enemies to do very weird things is just another reason why they shouldn't exist. Like, I even have a hilarious blooper in this video right here, where this guy right here does a turning animation that causes him to go in a circle, and it affects his pathing so much, and it further reinforces why the turning animations should not exist in this game. But now that they're dead, go through this door. I know that dog detected my sentrail, but the dogs are very slow to actually move through your trail. And then I'm going to skip directly to this encounter right here, because the chase encounter with Nora is not a problem whatsoever. And I had to restart the encounter here because I kept messing up because that guy on the left kept spotting me because his peripheral vision is god tier. It makes no sense. And while you're busy taking out this guy, you need to make sure that the column is between yourself and that woman over there. Now what you need to do is uh, wait for this guy to go right there. There are times when he will do the corner searching animation and he can potentially spot you with his peripheral vision. So you gotta make sure you take him out very quickly. But he is dead and all I need to do now is take out the female soldier. And this will pretty much conclude uh, Seattle Day 2 for uh, Ellie's section. I'm going to need to get to work on Seattle Day 3 for Ellie's section, but I just hope that one WLF section and the Bloater boss fight aren't going to be so annoying. I mean, as long as I can get uh, 6 shotgun shells before the Bloater boss fight, I should be fine. But the WLF encounter, with the increased awareness on the enemies, it's going to be really annoying, probably. But here are some bloopers right here, so watch this. This is why you don't remove the wind noise from Grounded Difficulty, because for some reason, this woman spots me, but she's not immediately aware of me. She's not going to the investigative status. That happens sometimes in this game. How they miss that in the development of Grounded Difficulty is a mystery I'll never get. And then watch this. Remember how I said that this woman and her dog can be very buggy? That dog is not aware of me whatsoever. But for some reason, look, look at that. Did you see that? How do they, they know I'm there? She's releasing her dog because she knows where I am. It's so stupid. And then right here, how does this guy see me? They've never been able to spot me at that distance while I'm in the grass. And then this right here, look at the turning animation. That is how stupid the turning animations can be at times with this game, and it happens so frequently. Yeah, it's definitely clear that Grounded Difficulty just wasn't properly playtested. And like this game overall, you know, it, it has some really cool designs to it. I do love this game, but these kind of niggles in the system really bring this game down in certain areas. It's just very unacceptable. Like, it's stuff like that that really makes me wonder, what have they done to ground the difficulty? Like, I can't believe that there are certain people who actually enjoy playing this difficulty, when this difficulty is just a step behind Survivor difficulty when it comes to level of quality. And even then, Survivor difficulty had problems, but nowhere near to the same degree as ground the difficulty. Like, you can't just arbitrarily adjust certain variables on the enemies, and then just release it as a product. Because... You have to make sure that the fundamental systems in play are actually working as intended. But as I've clearly shown, there are certain systems on this game that aren't working as intended, that Grounded Difficulty has just multiplied a hundredfold to become even greater issues. You know, the moments where you just get spotted for no reason, and then they decide to remove the feedback systems with the audio cues and the visual cues? You know, there's a reason why such systems are needed in these kind of stealth games, because at times, you get betrayed a lot by stealth games when it comes to systems like that. And then, with the turning animations, you know, with the enemies doing, like, really weird things with their turning animations, and then clipping on enemies, and then clipping on geometry. And then with the moments where you just get spotted at long range for no reason. You, you can't be serious right now. This is not a good difficulty. And there are people who will interpret this as being good difficulty, like this is legitimately difficult. But how can you say that a broken game has a perfectly serviceable harder difficulty that's legitimately difficult for all the right reasons? You know, apropos of this, that's like having a doctor saying that this MRI machine is perfectly serviceable despite the fact that it has a lot of software issues and crashes and all these weird issues happening. And if doctors like that were to exist, the whole entire public healthcare system would just completely collapse. No one would trust doctors again. 
Like, in this case, it's just hard to trust what the developers are doing. Like, what these kind of developers do when they try to service these kind of harder difficulties that just aren't properly playtested. It's... Like, if you think this is a perfectly serviceable difficulty, then you're just a moron. You have the mind of a second grader if you think this is perfectly acceptable. This difficulty just borders on laziness, and it's just not something I'm expecting from a AAA developer like Naughty Dog, who at times can almost feel on par with Capcom with their level of quality with certain games. But, I don't know. I don't know why they decided to opt for these kind of changes. Because all these changes do is just spit in the face of Grounded Difficulty. Because Grounded Difficulty was such a great difficulty mode from the first Last of Us. But enough about that. This has been Seattle Day 2 for Ellie's section. Stay tuned for the future parts. Thank you all for watching, and you take care now.